Welcome to the Juki booth here at IPC Apex. I'm delighted to be joined by Bill Astle, uh, President of the Americas. Nice to see you, Bill. Nice to see you again, Trevor. Always a pleasure. You know, you've had remarkable success over the last couple of years with your storage terror systems. Um, you know, you, you've, you've sold quite a few of them, but they seem to be getting bigger and bigger as, as, as uh, the storage solutions becomes more and more important in the smart factory environment. So tell us where we are now with the systems you've got on the floor here. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. We're having tremendous success with the stored solutions or automated warehouses, we're starting to call it. Uh, here at the show, we're introducing a extended capacity called our ISM 3900, uh, which is a partner to ISM 3600, which actually delivers the parts through the accumulator. So the combination of these two units will give you 7,500 seven inch, eight millimeter rails. So it's quite the capacity. That's so like extending the capacity by putting another unit alongside it. Um, and, and how do they connect? So there's a tunnel at the top of these two units and the back 3,900 shuttles the trays full of components, either rails, bulk or trays to the front unit, which then accumulates them and pulls the entire kit. Uh, and so this can happen in tandem. There's two robots uh, in the units combined. So the back one during the first pick would hand it off to the front. Mm -hmm. So that may be the longest, uh, let's say, transfer. From then on out, it's the same 15 seconds per tray, two reels per tray. So is, is there a capacity? Is it possible to, to bolt three or four of these together? It is, in fact, yes, yes. And then we've created the multi-interface module, which adds another 1,800 capacity plus the ability to now hand it off to an AGV or an elevator accumulator to put it on top of an AGV. The, the, um, yeah, I mean this space is becoming so popular because uh, being able to keep the line up and reduce machine downtime is, is uh, a fairly critical component in the uh, smart factory. Let's look at the, um, you've got a material registration labeling system there and that's another new unit you've got here at the show. Uh, explain to us how that works. It is indeed new to the industry, let's say, and it, it works in tandem with the ISM. It registers the components. When they come in, you need to print a unique ID, a unique label for each reel. Uh, and this, let's say, auto incoming station automatically recognizes the date, the lot code, the part number, the quantity on the reel, populates those fields, and then will pr automatically print a label for the operator to put onto the reel itself. So, so it's against the incoming in inventory to make sure it's the right uh, reel, the right... Uh, it does. It's something yeah. that uh, it checks with the ERP. If it's connected, it can make sure that's the right part that was ordered, it's the quantity. If it's due for a job, immediately it can be delivered to the floor, or then it's put into the tower and goes into the ERP system plus the inventory that we have in our software. Yeah. So it's so basically, the way it works is got a camera below, underneath the glass. It's got a, an OCR reader or something like that in it. Megapixel camera, yeah, right. That that recognizes the characters and then populates, auto populates the fields we need to print a unique ID label. Mm -hmm. And the labels we print allows the system to recognize any bi-directional or 360 degrees, if you will. The reel can be put in any direction. Right. So then we have no problems reading the barcode on the way in or on the way out or at the pick and place machines. Smart. Um, looking at the pick and place machines themselves, I mean, you've had the RS1 out for, for some time now, but you've, you've brought out a, a larger version of that, um, the RS1 EX, I believe, or XL. The RS1 XL system, yeah. We're introducing that. Uh, typically, we do come with the, let's say, the mid range machine, perfect that, and then for the large board market, we're always asked for in the range of a 20 by 22 inch. So. We've developed that for you know multi-up panels or large board backplane panels, for example. But it's still using the same technology as the RS1 with the adaptive laser align uh, that really uh, speeds up and maximizes the throughput based on the component height. Same head, same inspection system, just bigger board same size. Same features, same software, and ties into the whole Juki network or JNets as we call it. Okay. Um, so. Looking at some of your, your feeder technologies, you've come up with something that, that, that's really quite novel uh, with regards to auto-loading feeders uh, and yes. been able to strip in a second reel. Tell, yeah. tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so we've developed the automatic loading feeder for eight millimeter paper. 
and this has actually two entry points so you can feed in the first reel and when then that one's done the second reel will also automatically feed in detect splices and it will auto advance all the way to the first component as well uh, so it's it's a quite a nice labor savings if you will to load feeders uh, and also unload them and, and one of the other nice things about it is there's no waste that's correct right yeah you know, as we did in the demo there you saw it uh, advanced all the way to the first pocket and stopped. So there were not there were no parts lost, right. which is becoming more and more critical in, the, in these times with shortage of components. Talking about uh, components, you know, you, you've got, uh, of course, the uh, GM100 for the large odd form systems. Uh, so um, tell us a little bit about how you've, you've improved that. Yeah, so the JM10 and JM20 have been out for a number of years. We have thousands installed worldwide. So we've built on that success by also adapting the RS1 head to the JM100. And then something our customers have been asking for is an active clinch system underneath the board so that we can clinch the leads of through-hole parts so that if the boards are put in pallets or they're juggled, those parts don't fall over and wave solder, for example. So we now have that as a factory set option, uh, the clinching underneath. We've also added a 3D vision capability on the system. So in other words, instead of a 2D vision system, maybe taking multiple images at different Z heights and then trying to determine the lead tip, we actually have a three-dimensional camera and an inspection system that will allow us to more robustly do a full range of components. So is that, uh, is that based on the top side um, and to check for you know, co coplanarity of the, of the device that's, going, that's being inserted or is that in the bottom side? Uh, it's the bottom side lookup camera. So we would grab a component with our typical nozzle, gripper, or chucking nozzle, depending on the component, fly that over to this Uplook 3D vision camera, similar to a SMT machine, mm -hmm. image the entire lead frame, uh, you know, and you can have all sorts of different asymmetrical or symmetrical lead frames, and really determine exactly where the lead tip is uh, for, let's say, a wider range of plated through hole components than we can with a 2D vision camera. Uh, that technology will probably migrate into our normal SMT mounters as well in the future. Well, you're always coming out with new technology, Bill. It's great to see things happening here at Juki. Um, and just, you know, finally, I'd like to mention, you know, I see behind us a very fancy video from Hitachi uh, showing their, their uh, storage warehouse. Uh, what is that about? Yeah, so we collaborated together with Hitachi, who is a uh, big Juki client in our RX-6 mounters, mm -hmm. and they wanted to take the next step in the automation of their factory, specifically their IoT factory where they build a lot of IoT products for the industry. And they wanted to automate the movement and the storage of their materials for the PCB assembly. And so they implemented a number of the ISM storage towers, including the multi-interface module and the elevator stacker where we put it on top of the AGVs, automatically deliver the entire kits to the feeder setup area. Uh, so we're very proud of this. It's really a joint development. Uh, as you can imagine, there was a, a number of software levels that we had to incorporate as well. So we now have this AMM or Autonomous Material Manager software. Okay. So, great. Well, I mean, uh, it's great to see you um, obviously ex expanding all the time and uh, bringing in new product. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Trevor. Appreciate it.